All right, so now we're going to build our signup page. I have implemented a basic signup page and I have already implemented the main doco routing for that page. So now whenever we go ahead and for example, access the signup page from our browser, we will see a signup page here, meaning it's successfully rendered this function or this template from here, from the signing page. Now we'll go ahead and create our front end for this signup page. And to do that, we'll go back to our three line components and we take a component for register. For example, this component that states sign up or register. We're going to copy this code and basically paste that code right here. And here we need to make the adjustments, the same adjustments that we made with basically the login page, which for example, making the maximum width of this component to be small. So it wouldn't take the whole width and making the MX or the margin or the x direction to be automatic so it would be centered in our page here you can see that we have email address and password and confirm password which are enough in our sign up process now we probably also need to remove the sign up with google since we're not going to use that and we also will remove the form since we're not going to use a form submit so we're not going to send an ajs request with a form submit we will actually implement a function this function would be called sign up now this button tag would also have an attribute of disabled and this disabled attribute would be binded with alpine.js and basically binded with the loading state and we would also need an x text this text would do the same thing so basically the same that we did with the login page we will also bind the input fields to our input data now creating our x data object it would be similar to the login page x data we first define our loading state now we're going to find our variables, which are the variables that we used in our input X models here. We would need an email and a password. And also we would need a confirmed password. Now we'd create the function that would take these variables and create an authentication record inside our authentication collection. So we'll use async, sign up, and then this function would make the loading state to be true. Then we will create try catch block. And finally, we update our loading state. Now to create our user, we're going to use the create users endpoint from our users uh, collection here. So if we go back to our uh, admin UI, we can go to the API endpoints. And we can see here, we can create a user by just simply giving these values. Now we don't need all of these values because some of them are optional. We need the email and the password and the confirmed password values. So we will first create a const data, so an object of data. And this data would have our data from the input fields. And then we create a record using this create method. Then we can probably like request a verification if we want, but I'm not going to implement that to make this video short. So we will only authenticate or create the users and then we make sure that the user is authenticated and we direct it to the dashboard. So we create a const data. This data will be an object that will house our values. We will use, for example, the email that will take its value from this dot email. Then the password that will also take its value from this dot password. And lastly, the confirm password. We can make sure that it's the same thing here. So here they say password confirm. We make it confirm password. You can adjust that. I don't have to adjust the variable, but I, I want to. So I'm going to do that. It's confirm password. All right. And this will equal to or take the value of password confirm. Okay. Simply just like that. And now we can go ahead and create our user using this function call. So we will do an await or maybe a const, but we're not going to use the record. So probably we're not going to store it into a const. We're just going to call the method right away. So await pp.collection. And then we call the users collection, of course, and we create a user. We give it the data block that we just created right here. After that, we will make sure that the user is actually verified and actually created. We can go ahead and do the same thing that we did in the login page, which we will check the auth store because the auth store should be updated after this request is successfully made. So if the auth store has is valid, meaning the user is successfully authenticated, we can load the content of our dashboard. But before that, this method will create the instance of user, but it won't log in the user automatically. So we will need to call also the login method. And to do that, we will just create a const maybe, create auth data, and we will call the pp.collection, collection on the users, dot auth, with password. So here we can actually use these same information to authenticate our user. So now after we have implemented our sign up function, we just make sure that we call it whenever we click, as you can see here. And we also going to go back to the dashboard page. Now I want to implement also the logout functionality 
of our application so we can test the sign up functionality and to do that is as simple as creating a function inside here we'll create a function called this function log out this function will also take a try accept block and we can also do the same thing by implementing a loading variable we can also set this variable to be true now here we need to log the user out and then load the login page what we need to do is to call the logout endpoint so if we go back to the api endpoints we can see that if we call the logout right here so if we call the pp.authstore.clear we can just simply log out the user so we're going to do that right now. So we're just going to call pp.authstore.clear. So now we just want to implement like a, a button that will log us out. And here inside the div, inside the template, make sure that you have one div inside the template. Whatever content you have outside this div won't really be rendered. Only the one div inside the template would be rendered. So here we can have our span, for example, that says private, and then for example, a logout button. So we create just a button here that has the logout functionality. So on a click, we would just fire the logout function. This would fire this. So we would implement also disabled button, but when we do the actual dashboard. So now after save, we we'll go back to our application. We hit the refresh button. We can see that we have a logout button here. When we click that button, we should log out, but it didn't work. So we will check what happens here. Oh, we actually did log out, but maybe we didn't um, go back to the login page. And yes, exactly. We already logged the user out and we didn't uh, direct the user back to the login page. So to do that, we would just uh, run the load content. And the load content on the login page. Now, if we sign in again, just to test the logout uh, button from the dashboard. Now, if we click logout, it should redirect us to the login page. All right, awesome. Now we have redirected to that login page. And if we try to access the dashboard, it won't let us and it will redirect us because we have successfully logged out. Okay. Now, if we go back to the sign up page and we should be able to access it from here. Oh, awesome. Now we have the sign up page. So the sign up page will require three fields the email address, the password, and the confirm password. The email address would be some whatever, for example, test at test.com and the password and we click sign up as you can see we have signing up but nothing happened you can see with that we made a mistake in the sign up call and to actually see the log behind this error we go back to the pocket base and here we enter the logs and you can see this log right here so maybe we created something that okay not not this one actually but this one the post on the record endpoint we have failed to create the record and says password confirm cannot be blank because when we updated the confirm password variable we didn't update that on our confirm password field so here the x model should be updated it should say password confirm password confirm when we save right now refresh the page so now we can give a test at test.com and a password confirm that password and then hit the accept I click signing up so we can see signing up and then we didn't actually direct it but maybe it worked but we didn't successfully direct it so if we go back to the dashboard yes now we have already created the account and successfully logged in but for some reason it didn't redirect us now we're not going to use this auth data so maybe we just remove this because we're not going to use it anyway and we just need to authenticate with password right when we hit save now and we refresh our page. We also make sure to rerun our server to implement the new the new edits, right? Because sometimes we create a page and we forget to generate the temple of it. So the watcher actually doesn't watch that page. All right, so after we did that, now we can refresh our page. If we now hit log out, we can see that we are currently logged out. If we then click sign up, we can go ahead and sign up create a new account, click sign up. As you can see right now, we have been directed to the dashboard. And to make things a bit fun, we go back to the dashboard. So from here we can say, because we have the auth store, we can actually make it display our name. For example, here, we can implement the Alpine X text variable and say 
use the auth.model.email. So we're gonna use the email or display the email of the authenticated user. We hit save, refresh the page, we can see that we are authenticated as this email right here. Awesome, so we are done creating our sign up and login page. Next, we will create the homepage 